In this video, we will take a closer look at Line, one of the most popular methods to explaining black box algorithms. Line was introduced in 2016 by Marco Tulio Ribeiro in an article titled Why Should I Trust You? It had a great impact at the time and has been one of the most cited papers in the field of explainable artificial intelligence. LIME stands for Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations, and it is an algorithm that can explain individual predictions of any classifier or regressor in a faithful way. Each part of the LIME's name reflects something that we desire in explanations. Local refers to local fidelity, that is, we want the explanation to really reflect the behavior of the classifier in the neighborhood of the instance being predicted. This explanation is useless unless it is interpretable, that is, unless a human can make sense of it. LIME can be applied to any machine learning model, so it is model agnostic. An explanation, which means that you get an explanation that helps interpret the model, or, in this case, the output of the model. Different forms of data may be used to train our machine learning model. Therefore, it is important to distinguish between features and interpretable data representations. Interpretable explanations need to use representation that is understandable to humans, regardless of the actual features used by the model. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have a classifier recognizing whether there is a wolf or a husky dog in the photo. The model stated that there was a wolf in this image, although in reality it was a husky. In the picture below, we see the explanation of which parts were informative for our classifier. It turns out that instead of wolves, it detects snow. If not for the approach to explainability of artificial intelligence models, we would not know that the decision were made on the basis of the wrong parts of the photo. So the answer is, don't trust the model blindly. Without knowing on what basis it makes its choices, we don't know if it's the right signal, noise or background. So the key is to try to understand how it works and to generate explanations. Here we've seen that an interpretable representation may be a binary vector indicating the presence or absence of a superpixel, while the classifier may represent the image as a tensor. Likewise, for texts, a possible interpretable representation for text classification is a binary vector indicating the presence or absence of a word, even though the classifier may use incomprehensible features such as word embeddings. In this example, we can see a model that classifies texts as important or not important. An understandable explanation consists in highlighting in red the words that contributed to the classification being made as important and in green for texts classified as not important. Formally, if we denote X as the original representation of an instance being explained, Lime uses simplified inputs X prime that map to the original inputs through a mapping function H. The simplified input X prime is interpreted as a binary vector for its interpretable representation. This means that we transform our original feature vector into a discrete binary vector where features are included or excluded. The way H is defined allows us to recover X prime from our original input X through the inverse of H. Given this distinctive between features and interpretable data representations, we now can assume we are dealing with interpretable features like the age of a person. For data in tabular format and assuming that all the features are interpretable, the instance x is itself an interpretable representation, that is, x equals x prime. Thus, for the sake of notation simplicity, Lime will be presented without distinguishing between x and x prime. Before diving into the mathematics, We'll make a brief overview of LIME using an abstract graphical approach. LIME can be divided into four steps. The first one, the decision boundary of our original Black's model is represented by the blue-white background, and as we can see, it is highly nonlinear. The pink point is the instance we want to be explained, and it has been predicted as diabetes. How we can explain that our model predicts diabetes without peeking into the complex model we receive our predictions from? We cannot reduce the whole limit boundary in a unique explanation. There is a global explanation. Lime main idea is to zoom in a neighborhood of the prediction which leads us to step 2. Now we can do a simple explanation of this local region. 
This way we do not worry about the rest of the model and we obtain an explanation equally valid. It is worth mentioning that features that may be important in a local context may be not be globally important and vice versa. In other words, a local explanation does not imply a global explanation. What LEM does is to present a local explanation through a transparent surrogate model, in this case, a linear model, in the region surrounding our prediction. But how do we train this linear model? This leads us to step 3. We simply perturb instances, the yellow points, around our ping point and weight them according to their proximity to it. We get the original model's prediction on these perturbed instances, and then learn a linear model, the black line. That approximates the model well in the vicinity of our instance. Note that classifying the black point incorrectly into the surrogate model is not relevant since it is far away from our ping point. Finally, in this step, we receive our explanation by interpreting the local model. The bar charts represent the importance given to the most relevant features, that is, the features that have most contributed to the prediction of our ping point. In the case of using a linear regression as a surrogate model, these values would be the fitted weights of the model. Let's now see the line mathematical optimization problem. The explanation produced by line is obtained by the following generic formula where x is a predicted instance we want to explain. For example, an x could be a row in a data frame. Let us first introduce the necessary elements to understand the line optimization problem. f is the complex model being explained. In classification, f of x is a probability, or a binary indicator, that x belongs to a certain class. For multiple classes, we explain each class separately. Thus f of x is a prediction of the relevant class. g is the surrogate model we use to approximate f in the vicinity of x. And capital G is a family of possible interpretable models, for example, the linear models such as lasso, or a decision tree, or, for example, the decision rules. pi of x is the local neighborhood of x. Now, Let's take a closer look of the two last functions that we optimize in line. The first one indicates a measure of how unfaithful g approximates f in a neighborhood defined by pi of x. And the second one, denoted by omega, is a complexity measure of the model g that it is used to regulate the complexity of the surrogate model. In the case of decision trees, it can refer to the depth of the tree or in a linear regression the number of null weights. Here, we assume complexity is opposed to explainability. The objective is to assure interpretability and local fidelity while minimizing the first loss function maintaining omega of g, that is, the second loss function, small enough to be interpretable for a human. In summary, our loss function tells us to find a simple model g belonging to the class of interpretable models g well, capital G, where the model fidelity is maximized in the neighborhood pi of x of our instance, keeping the interpretability as simple as possible. We want to minimize the local loss functional without making any assumptions about f, since we want the explainer to be model agnostic. Thus, in order to learn the local behavior of f as the inputs vary, we approximate L by generating perturbated instances weighted by pi. How do we generate these perturbations? In tabular data, LIME creates a new instances individually perturbing each feature of X from an orbital distribution inferred from the training set. Given this dataset Z of perturbed samples with associated labels, we optimize the LIME optimization function that, as we have seen, is the following one. LIME chooses the family of surrogate interpretable models capital G as the class of linear model G. This type of model is used to minimize the weighted linear regression. In one, we minimize the square distances between the predictions of our complex model F and our simple model G. This is done for all perturbed instances, assigning each of them a weight pi. Let pi be an exponential kernel defined on some distance function d, usually the Euclidean distance, and kernel width sigma squared. The exponential kernel attributes a value in the range 0 to 1 the higher, the closer to the reference point. 
while the kernel width decides how large the cycle of the meaningful weights around it is. Coming back to the optimization problem, it is worth noting that this method is fairly robust to sampling noise since the samples are weighted by pi. Also, since line produces an explanation for an individual prediction, its complexity does not depend on the size of the dataset, but instead on the time to compute f of x and on the number of perturbed samples n. However, regarding the second loss term, how we ensure that the explanation is interpretable? For tabular data, we do it by predefining a set of features k that we wish to have in our interpretable model. Although a greater k potential results in more fidelity in the model, the lower k, the simpler the model is to understand. For training models with exactly k features, lasso is a common option. Why? A lasso model with a high regularization parameter lambda produces a featureless model. By retaining the lasso model with a slowly decreasing lambda, we can exactly get k weights that differ from zero, thus obtaining k features. As Lime uses lasso as a sparse linear model, this particular choice of omega directly optimizes the second loss term and solves the Lime optimization function. Now it's time to recap and see everything we've seen so far, dividing Lime into intuitive steps. Step 1. We select our instance of interest for which we want to have an explanation of its black box prediction. Step 2. We perturb our training dataset and get the black box prediction for these new points. Step 3. Weight the new samples according to their proximity to the instance of interest. Step 4. Train a weighted interpretable model on the dataset with the perturbed instances. Step 5. Explain the prediction by interpreting the local model. Like every model, and the line is no less, it has some limitations. The neighborhood. When using line with tabular data, the right definition of the neighborhood is a huge and soft challenge. This is line's most serious flaw, and the reason why it should be used only with extreme caution. No linearity. Because we selected capital G as the family of sparse linear models, there may not be a faithful explanation if the underlying model is very non-linear, even in the prediction's locality. Improbable instances. Perturbed instances are produced from a Gaussian distribution without regard for feature correlation. This can result in improbable instances that can be used to learn local explanation models. Instability. It has been shown that in a simulated situation, the explanations for two relatively close points change it substantially. Furthermore, if one repeats the sample procedure, the results might be different because instability makes it hard to believe explanations. One should be very critical. Lime's biggest advantage is its agnosticity. Even if the underlying machine learning model is replaced, the same local interpretable model can be used for explanation. Another advantage of Lime is that the generated explanations are brief and understandable to humans. As a result, the Lime application may be more appropriate in situations when the recipient of the explanation is a lay person or someone with limited time. In situations where we may be legally obligated to explain a prediction thoroughly, this is insufficient. To finish, this video derives from my bachelor's degree final project, which you can find on the LinkedIn I leave you in the description. There, everything is explained in detail with the corresponding references. I also want to mention that the book titled Interpretable Machine Learning from Christoph Molnar and the YouTube channel DeepFinder have been of great help in making this video. Finally, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will be happy to solve them.